So hopefully everybody's been saving their asterisks, and here's some reasons why. In a recent video, we talked about this to some degree, so I'm not going to go too far in depth. But in short, the asterisk at the bottom here, you can see the new gem, Mother's Lament, is actually going to be craftable. This gem on paper, at least from the description that has been released from Blizzard, is going to be very, very strong in terms of damage output. So this is going to be a gem, two-star gem, that everybody's going to want to have. So saving your asterisk to give you the ability to craft it, and even if you don't want to use this gem yourself, saving the runes to craft it when it comes out and selling the gem is going to be pretty profitable for Platinum. There's going to be a large demand for this. And I'll put up a table of how many duplicates are needed. I didn't go through and check the validity of this table. However, if you in fact do need 40 duplicates, then you're going to want 3,200 Asterunes if possible. I understand this is a large amount and requires a high amount of Elder Rifts to be done. So certainly that number is not feasible by everybody. But depending on how many you can get and the more you can save the better off you'll be in terms of saving platinum or making platinum again if you want to actually do this for a profit this gem is going to be super strong i assume everybody's going to want to put this in the gem power is far easier because you could swap a current two-star gem however if you don't want to do that you'll have to come up with some gem power as well and that choice is ultimately up to you but i think that if you're looking at two-star gem options mother's lament is going to be a gem that basically works into every build not sure who wouldn't want 32% critical chance. This will be strong for everyone. The one thing I have in mind that we won't know until it's released is whether or not this gem is going to work for Necro Summons. So that may be something that I would potentially hold off on acquiring the gems or crafting them yourself until we kind of get that tested and confirmed. In general today, just kind of doing some farming. We do have the D4 early access today. I will be participating in that. And you'll be able to find me on Twitch when that comes out late afternoon or early evening, depending where you are. So if you're interested, you can follow me on Twitch. Make sure that you check out the Twitch drops to get exclusive in-game items and the exclusive mount and so forth. I also have made a sub-channel for anybody who's not aware. I have separated Immortal and D4 from each other so that the content doesn't kind of conflict with each other and people can just view what they would like. So make sure you check out the sub-channel. I'll leave in the description below. If you're interested in following the D4 content as I keep up with that as well. In other talks today, I was pleasantly surprised when I logged in. And what do you know? Not everybody had quit. Much to the dismay of some of the loudest people in world chat. Well, there's still a lot of people playing this game. Still a lot of people looking for groups. And although the early access isn't live yet, I suspect that the day will still be busy. And given the time of the release, you may see a drop off in the evening. But I assume again tomorrow we'll still be able to find groups and get our dailies done. However, if you're interested in taking a break from the game, remember that there is the Return to Sanctuary event, and this is a very useful tool. If you're just feeling burnt out or just want to switch gears for a little bit and try out Diablo 4, whether it's in the early access or when the full access begins, if you don't play for 14 days or two weeks, when you come back there will be a Return to Sanctuary event, which gives you a whole bunch of catch-up mechanics, and this is really an ideal time for it. To kind of be released the current server paragon i'm i'm actually above it the current server paragon is 732 so even if you fast forward another 10 levels to 742 and then take 14 days off we'll be looking at paragon 770 and at which point you really haven't lost anything when the major update comes paragon 800 is going to be the threshold for the inferno difficulty so you can kind of catch up and that gives you a good leeway of another two weeks to use and take advantage of that return to sanctuary event get caught up and get into the new content if you're interested so it might be an ideal time just to try out the other game see what you prefer and keep in mind that you have to abide by your clan's rules and regulations so if your clan has a minimum paragon level well i'm not telling you to take two weeks off and everything's gonna be fine with them make sure you check with them before you do something like that along those same lines of taking a break What's interesting about the latest event, Dread Pilgrimage, and I talked about this when we went through the patch notes or update notes, but on this, compared to other events where you actually had to log in on specific days, well here you actually unlock it on a particular date, which means once it's unlocked, you can go back and finish or complete this anytime after that date. So if you were to take two weeks off, well, you can still kind of do this and you'll still be able to catch up before the end of this event. And this is kind of a nice change, I think, for a lot of people, not being forced to be online or log into the game for a specific day, but in fact, give you kind of a grace period. It's kind of a nice change, and this will still allow you to unlock some pretty cool stuff. First one is actually a legendary gem. I happen to get a Unity Crystal. And I believe you can get anything. It does say random. I don't know if it has any exclusions, but I believe you can get any of the two-star gems. You get a legendary crest. 
additional rewards. This is another legendary gem and so forth. So you get some gear as well. So really good stuff, especially coming back. This stuff could be nice. So what about legendary crests in regards to the Mother's Lament gem? Well, personally, I would save those as well. If you have the bound legendary crests, it won't much matter when you run these unless you want to save them. But once the gem comes out in hopes of getting an additional duplicate, you can also use that. If you're crafting the eternal legendary gems, say from Elder Rifts you've run in the past, using those embers to craft the eternals and then running rifts, well, I would suggest saving those personally. This will depend on your server and the market and so forth. But I think there's going to be a lot of demand for gem power when this Mother's Lament comes out. And I expect that most prices on the market for most players will actually increase, meaning that you'll get more platinum from this if you save them and take advantage of that then. So if you have legendary gems at the moment that you've been placing in the market, you may even want to restrict from putting those up in hopes of capitalizing on that later. Again, make sure you check with and have some details on your own market, but I expect this would probably be the trend for at the majority of the servers out there. As always... Thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.